What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23, coming to you today with a little commentary about Destiny. And I had some interesting thoughts yesterday after watching the uh, Twitch reveal stream for year two. Of course, I did my video detailing, you know, what I thought about everything they showed yesterday about the Taken King. If you guys want to check that out, I will link it below in the description so you can go uh, watch a video. It's a little bit long, but I, you know, give most of my commentary on some of the major stuff that they are bringing out with the Taken King. But while I was watching that stream and seeing a lot of the new features they're implementing in this game, I couldn't help but um, have a thought that I had way back when, when Destiny had first come out. And it was something uh, I had talked about in some of my early Destiny videos, especially when the game was kind of struggling with its identity and wasn't quite sure what kind of game it wanted it to be. Obviously, you know, Destiny had a, a couple of problems early on just with, you know, the grind and everything and what kind of game. Uh, you know, it didn't really have much of an identity. Uh, and I said it, in a couple of my early videos, I made the statement that, you know, Activision should have uh, Blizzard come over and help Bungie out with Destiny, because it was pretty clear they wanted to have some uh, MMO-type elements in the game. And I'm one of those people that I will continually say this game is not an MMO. It's, it, it lacks a lot of the MMO features. However, it does borrow quite a bit from that genre. So it's like, again, it doesn't really know qu quite what it wants to do. You know, it's got the loot system, it's got some of the progression, uh, but, but at heart, this game is a first-person shooter. But I can't help but think after watching the stream yesterday that Blizzard is actually kind of secretly helping Bungie out with Destiny now. And I'm going to get into why I think that here in a minute. But, you know, I know they did hire... Uh, they brought a guy over from, I believe it was Guild Wars 2 to start working on the lore. That was several months back. And then they also brought in some people from High Moon Studios to help, I guess, with the story and the Taken King. And uh, if you guys don't know of High Moon Studios, they did uh, two amazing games, uh, Transformers War for Cybertron and Transformers Fall of Cybertron, which uh, are both on, I believe, PS3 and Xbox 360. If you guys are huge Transformers fans, I strongly suggest checking those games out. They're absolutely amazing uh, if you like Transformers. And they're pretty good games overall if you're just a general kind of shooter, third-person shooter fan. But... Uh, just going through some of the stuff they showed yesterday, especially in the tower reveal, uh, I, I tend to think that we are seeing a lot of Blizzard's influence now uh, coming into Destiny, and it's you know that's that may be a good thing because you know Blizzard has a lot of experience running an MMO, and of course Destiny, like I said, is not an MMO, but it does have several of the elements such as the loot and somewhat a little bit of the progression system. But you can tell now, you know, they're going to this more streamlined quest system. You know, the quests are going to have specific rewards. You're going to have to do quests to do a lot more. They're going to be multi-stage. Uh, that's very reminiscent of some of the stuff you do in Warcraft. Uh, the most notable thing to me is the new way they are doing the leveling and the light system. Uh, basically, and that's really kind of something that exists in most MMOs, is that everyone can reach the end game level. Um, and But then your gear sort of determines how powerful you are after that. And it seems like that's what they're doing now. Uh, with Destiny, you know, before it was like you were kind of gated from reaching that in-game level if you didn't, weren't able to run the raids or certain content, and now it's you'll be able to reach level 40 regardless of the content you're able to do, but the people who run the in-game and the more difficult content at the end will have better gear and thus be more powerful, which that's usually how typical uh, MMO games work. Well done. And that's how World of Warcraft is. You know, everybody can reach the in-game level, which I believe now is 100. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been on World of Warcraft. But everybody can reach that in-game level, and then what determines who's more powerful at in-game is who's run the different in-game content, who's done the harder difficulty stuff, who has the better armor with the better, you know, perks and better attributes to it. And that's pretty much how Destiny is going to work now. At least that's what it, how it appears from the reveal stream yesterday. You're now going to have an individual light level, which is going to be across your weapons and your armor and your ghost shell and everything else, which is going to determine your actual power level but everyone will be able to reach that in-game level, which I think is a good thing. I think that's a much better system than what they had in place before. But like I said, that's very reminiscent of the way the gear works in most MMOs, especially World of Warcraft. So that's just one thing that kind of caught my attention. Uh, the other thing was the way they are doing all these new uh, kiosks, whether it's the kiosks for uh, the exotic collections or the shaders and ships and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it's very interesting to see that because that is essentially the way World of Warcraft's heirloom system works. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with that, what the heirloom system in Warcraft is, it's basically you can get these special heirloom items that you can use across your entire account. 
uh, any player, even your level ones, can come in and use it. And it's shared. It's like there's an heirloom vendor, one spot you go to, and you can pick up any of the items that you uh, have, you know, received in your time playing the game. And that's for all your characters. And that'll all be accessible for every character on your account. And that's very similar to the way these new collections are going to work in the tower. Uh, now, even though they're all going to be in, scattered about the tower, it's essentially the same thing, especially the exotic system where, you know, any exotic you've collected in year one, you'll have the blueprints for it. And then any, you know, any exotic you want to pick up on any of your characters will be available there in that in those exotic kiosks. So that's another thing that I noticed. Very, very interesting how they are kind of streamlining the game and putting in a lot of the elements that we've seen in World of Warcraft. And then something else too was back in, this is way, way long time ago, back in 2010, uh, it was right after Bungie had finished Halo Reach and you know they had signed their contract with Activision, they were moving over to work with Activision. And Blizzard actually came out and made some comments and they basically were talking about how they thought it would be really cool to work with Bungie on an MMO type game. Of course, this was back in 2010 and you know they, they Bungie was working on this, you know, they said Bungie's working on stuff for Activision, they're part of the Activision family, we'd love to help them out. They mentioned this at several panels and you know Bungie was working on a secret project at the time, which of course we now know is Destiny. So I just wonder, you know, it's very it's very cool to kind of see some of this the stuff coming over that I think is is better. Now guys, I'm still don't don't get me wrong, you know, I'm I'm saying a lot of positive things about Destiny right now, but don't get me wrong, I'm still very skeptical of the Taken King because uh, really yesterday we didn't see much to get to that I thought really should get anybody hyped up. Uh, they just showed a lot of stuff they're putting in the tower, which quite honestly, like with House of Wolves, a lot of that stuff was available even if you didn't buy the DLC. So it's going to be very interesting to see how much of the Taken King stuff is actually available to people who don't end up purchasing the expansion. And that's something I'm probably, you know, cause I'm, right now I'm not planning on buying it until I see some really good reviews on it. Uh, my main concern still is that the story is going to be just absolutely non-existent. And I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still very, it's very hard to trust Bungie on anything they say after the whole year we have with year one. But, you know, what I'm pl probably going to do, just to sh show comparison, is uh, on my Xbox account, which I haven't touched since, I don't know, like, uh, April. <laughs> I haven't played my Xbox One in forever. and uh, But I do have House of Wolves and, and everything on there because I had bought the expansion pass when I bought the game for Xbox One originally before I got my PS4. Uh, but what I'm probably going to do with that is when Taken King does come out, I'm going to jump on my Xbox account and go check out the tower and see exactly what I, if there's anything I can actually purchase or do. Uh, even not having the expansion. I think that actually will make kind of an interesting video to show the comparison. And then you, that way you can actually see what your 40 to 60 to $80 is going to get you with Take the King in terms of what content you're actually getting with that. You know, I'm wondering if a lot of the systems they're putting in place are going to be there regardless if you buy the expansion. So we'll see what we'll see what happens with that. Um, that'll, that might make an interesting video. Anyways, guys, what do you think? Do you think uh, do you think Blizzard is having some kind of influence on Destiny? And do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it could go either way, quite honestly, because World of Warcraft, uh, you know, I used to play WoW all the time. I love World of Warcraft. It's a great game, just, just a really deep world, a lot of fun to play. But then over the last couple of years, World of Warcraft to me has just really gone downhill. It's just not anywhere near the game it used to be. And uh, whether it's the community or just the stuff Activision is doing, like taking stuff away from players, which, oh, by the way, they reversed their decision on taking, they took away flight from players in World of Warcraft, basically to increase player time, um, you know, which is Activision's favorite statistic is how long people are engaged with their game. Uh, they had taken away the flying mounts so people would have a harder time skipping trash bobs and flying across the zone. Well, they had such an outrage about it and they lost about two or three million subs again. So they decided, oh, hey, we, our next patch, we're going to put flying back in the game. So they're, they're giving players flying back, but it's very interesting the way they're doing it. They're now making it, so you're going to have to grind all these really difficult uh, things within the game and achievements and things in order to be able to get flying. So, uh, so yeah. So it could be a good thing or a bad thing if, if Blizzard is kind of trying to influence Bungie a little bit because, uh, you know, they've done some good things with World of Warcraft, but the last couple of years have been kind of kind of bad for for a while. So but either way, guys, would love to know what you guys think, especially if you, uh, if you play any of Blizzard's games what you think about that because obviously they haven't said anything official but since blizzard is under activision's umbrella you know it, it's kind of it's always kind of shocked me that bungie never would have asked them for help with this kind of game especially with some of the systems they were trying to put in place with loot and things so i just thought that made for a little bit of interesting commentary and i uh, would love to hear your guys thoughts 
I hope you guys are having a great day. It is almost Friday, almost the weekend, so just a couple more days. Hang in there, guys. Get to the weekend and have a good time gaming or do whatever you're going to do this weekend. So, anyways, guys, that's going to about do it for me. I hope you guys are having a great day. Please leave your comments below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again next time.